All right, folks, welcome back to more L5R World Cup action. We have round two action, Scotland versus Greece. Both teams are 1-0. and oh. We have Knightly G versus Inagon. So Scorpion versus Crab. Unfortunately, when I zoom in like this, Knightly G's name gets covered up, but he is the Scorpion player. I believe it is Brett Knight. And uh, we have Krakow winner Inagon here. And so we have Vice Proprietor come down for Scorpion. We have Inigan using Kuden Hida to buy out. Let's see. Kuden Hida got bought the Gallant Quartermaster, it looks like. Yeah, discarded a second Quartermaster. And then on City of the Rift Rock, we have Kasada and Butcher. And Inigan just buys Shurusuki, a Hida Guardian, and an Envoy. Uh, Inigon is 3 to Knightly G is 5. We do have City of the Open Hand as the restricted card for Scorpion. And looks like we're seeing a similar um, setup to what Chris was doing, Sir Largeness. Um, foregoing your Water Province for Toshi Rambo to make sure you don't buy your own Choju. So we're going to see probably Phoenix Splash with Keeper of Earth here. Probably going to see Earth here. Oh, no, you don't want to get displayed, I guess. Going to water is good here, actually. It forces it forces a display if you want to deny the Keeper and also threatens. We do have a Kuni Lab giving some strength here. So either side is three. Uh, Inigan decides to go Paul. Interesting enough. So you can defend with the Vice Proprietor, and if you use it, you bow the Envoy, but then you lose the strength, so it's not really a good trade. You could then move the token from the goss or from the the VP to the Gossip. We do see a four shame, I believe two four shames. No, way of the scorpion four shame to bow the quartermaster. Um, we see court games to dishonor the VP. It's interesting that Inagon chooses to dishonor instead of honor. I guess I guess if he honors his envoy, it just gets bowed by the VP. So this forces action from Scorpion to do it this way. If you're gonna court games though, I think I would like to court games to honor my quartermaster after getting way of the scorpion. Because I want to keep my characters neutral or give them an honor token, if, if, at, if at all possible. And the way that Inagon did it is he gave his opponent a dishonor token, which doesn't really matter. And probably act, will actively hurt him in the long run because it gives more city activations. Whereas if you keep the tokens off your character, in the long run it's better.
we see the favorable go ground move the shameless gossip into the conflict if i'm inagon I'm, I'm pretty happy with this I'll, it could signify a conflict character but i don't know what conflict characters uh brett is playing let's take a look I guess there's six here. There's a Guardian Kami, two Goblin Sneaks, which are really bad here because Inagon has no fate, a Slovenly, and two Miyakos. Um, Kami or Scavenger would be the best ones. But, I mean, if, if, you're, if your opponent has to play a Goblin Sneak here to initiate a conflict, you're quite happy as Inagon. Your opponent spent an extra card than you and used one of their favorable grounds. Going to have no standing characters. I'm pretty confident if this is my situation here. Moves the token from the VP to the Shameless Gossip. Good usage here. Yeah, yeah, James, the uh, the Scotland hype video was amazing, purely amazing. Uh, if anyone hasn't seen it, they did a, a Power Rangers, uh, like, intro, and it was so good. And, you know, having met, met the Scottish players at Worlds uh, last year, I can say they're a really awesome gr group of guys. Alright, so Scorpion passes their conflict as they have no characters able to do it, to do um, a challenge. And then we see both characters come in from Inagon, goes in for air. You really want to taxi your opponent on air as early as possible with um, against, against display of power. It just forced them to keep spending displays, and then you can kind of dictate the pace of the game. Obviously, it matters less if, you're, if you have um, a higher amount of honor. And then if you ever resolve one of these airings, you feel great. So we see Shudu Siki get activated. I think we're going to see a display of power here to to claim the airing from uh, Inagon. Yeah, but that's what we see. So Inagon will get drained 10 to 9. And then he's in range to get... Actually, uh, you know, both have Dishonored characters leaving, so he'll get Dishonored twice. Uh, let's see. There's no sack outlet for this Quartermaster. But he's going to get a fate and a card back from his envoy, so it'll be eight cards to seven, and this is so aggressive. I mean, it's worth... I don't like this. So the reason you don't you don't want to do this is, one, it's not a good usage of resources. Goblin Sneak... So Goblin Sneak steals a fate from your opponent, but Enigon doesn't have one. Then you get an unopposed, which puts your opponent to nine... So then you're not going to get to box them immediately next turn. Oh, and then we have a common cause. Okay. So now Inagon's not even going to take the unopposed here. Is he going to be able to defend this presume? I guess you could do, I would do void here maybe. Try and get one of these two characters off the board. And then do Earth first turn next, or first conflict next turn with the fate on it. I think I would run it that way. You feel really bad now as Scotland because your Goblin Sea can't beat this Guardian without spending a card, and you spent two fate to not steal one from your opponent.
Well, so Inagon... In Inagon, um... Only took the two fate from the quartermaster because his opponent ran out of fate, Demagogue, right? Like, that's that's why he did it. Otherwise, he would just pass. And then just save the card, I think. So we do see the Void Ring, and we do see a Watch Commander get played. Um, I think this is pretty aggressive here. Yeah, I agree, Dark Black. I think using the VP when he was already winning was aggressive. I'm not a huge fan of playing Watch Commander there. Um, I prefer putting a Watch Commander onto a more important target. But it does it does guarantee you the win, that's for sure. Okay, so now Scorpion is going to have a Dishonored character leave down to 8. The Stronghold can, will then put Inagon down to 8. Now, I think you have to discard your Kunilev here, even though it's so powerful. You just can't afford the extra honor loss. And probably keep Kasada, discard Butcher, and Keeper, yeah. So we see, what is this? Oh, is this Shosiro Actor, which lets you copy your opponent's non-unique character? Hmm. Does buy it, so I guess could copy Vanguard Warrior until the end of the conflict. So you can copy Vanguard Warrior and then use it. We do see an Iron Mind get flipped for Inagon. Very smart indeed. Um, and a second Keeper Initiate. So, he can Vanguard Warrior, the Shurusuki, and Iron Mind, the Guardian, or vice versa. Kasada to Fate. Inagon is, is taxed on Fate here. He's the fate, only Fate he's going to get is the Fate on the Ring. And if we see uh, Brett has the second Goblin Sneak, that Fate could go away also. So, we see City... Uh, steal the fate. Oh, sorry, steal the honor. So Scotland should be attacking Earth here. Um, you could go with your actor and copy either the Yasuki or the Vanguard Warrior. That's probably what I would do. And then after the conflict is over, I would probably use my Master Whisperer. Uh, although your actor's ability is actually going to get cancelled by Kusada. So it's going to be kind of awkward for Scorpion to navigate the big man. We did see the bids get dropped immediately. Both players are down to one now. Um, it's really awkward as Scorpion to do this, though. I would not have dropped my bid to one as Scorpion. I would have bid five. Um, you really need to find calling in favors to take this Watch Commander. And then you also need to find um, cards like Alibi Artist and have them be on immediately before you can really drop your bid safely. Because at the moment, you are actually down cards to Crab. And you're down a huge amount of board. Because Crab has... Both have even cards in hand. Crab has an attachment in play. And they have an, a Shurujusuki activation.
Hey, what's up, Jason? So it looks like Brett has def uh, done an Earth Conflict. Unigon snap blocks with both his uh, Guardian and his Yusuke. I think it might have been a little bit of an over block here. You can just block with your Vanguard Warrior and be pretty safe here. This seems a bit of an over an overstretch. Hey, what's up, Dan? Dan, are you home? Do you want to uh, to co co, co cast with me? I don't know your your work situation. So we see Shudusuki get activated. We see a way of the scorpion to dishonor, but that's going to get eaten by Kasada. Watch Commander makes him lose an honor. You need to pick and choose your conflicts really, really uh, effectively here if you're a scorpion. Because, especially with this Watch Commander in here, you cannot afford to be burning cards into Kasada and then losing the conflict. So, actor becomes a copy of Shujutsuki. Like, you discarded a card to then turn your character into a, a, char a card that gets you a card. Into a character that gets you another card, right? So, you you basically looted this card away by playing it into Kasada and then turning your character into Yusuki. You then lost an honor in this whole, in this whole situation. So, like, you basically paid one life to, to loot. And, like, you discarded a good card, too. Like, you looted away a good card. And that's what we see. We just see... We just see the way the Scorpion get looted away. Uh, probably military water with... Kas I guess you could just use Kasada on defense here. Um, kind of awkward. I guess if you have, like, a fan or something, that'd be good. Sons of Vanguard Warrior right into Shameful Display. Pretty, pretty unfortunate for Inigon here. Uh, t just gives, just passes up on the fate on the ring. Probably see a block with this, uh, yeah, the Vice Proprietor. Get a Shameful Activation. Oh, right, so Master Whisperer into Kasada, then Shameful Activation. So, you know, at least at least Brett is thinking further ahead than I am. We're not, not wasting Shameful into Kasada. And so we do see the Shameful Activation. It's really awkward, though, because Brett isn't winning this way. Like, Inigon just passes and forces more action.
Well, you want to go water because you have two keeper initiates. So it's not really, it's not even that. It's mostly just the keeper initiates. And we did see, we did see a bonsai get played. So Inigon is just go, get, getting the choke in here. Um, both players are going to be on seven honor at the end of this turn. Inigon's going to have a much better board though. And Brett really needs to get, to get like Shoju flipped here. But he, he has a nice pool of fate ready to go. And so we do see City of the Rich Frog get broken here. Inigon goes down to 7. Then is going to go down to 6 from this um, Vanguard Warrior. Awkward that... the Well, so the, the Guardian's Dishonor isn't going to go away this turn, which is good. And so we see Paul Void come out here. Um... If you have another display, it's not that bad. You just get your Casada down to or voided. There's the fan. I might consider, like, you can't calling in favors of this. You have to calling in favors of the Watch Commander, but like, it would be so juicy to prevent the break. So there's the Void Ring on the Master Whisperer. Inigon should use the Vanguard Warrior on... There's no display also, which is actually really big. Because this means Kasada is going to stay around for, for basically the rest of the game. Because the game's not going to go three more turns. And so we see the Guardian get saved by the Vanguard Warrior. And we'll see the Iron Mine save the Shurutsuki. Or Inigon could play it safe. Save his Iron Mine. And then Iron Mine the uh, Guardian one more time to save himself on honor. I would probably do that line. Where I save my Iron Mine for my Guardian because I just don't want to lose, and the only way I feel myself losing with Casada in already in play is if I get dishonored, and so I would just do everything I possibly could to prevent that. Inion just decides to prevent the Shudasuki from leaving play, so maybe maybe he can actually win this turn with the two breaks. That would also be an acceptable thing. We have an Earth becomes Sky and Casada, pretty pretty annoying. Should be on three dispatch to nowhere. But we have an iron mine, iron mine, another iron mine, sorry, to prevent that. Another reason to keep, to keep an iron mine face up, but obviously eating on the smarter than I am. Um, we do have Oishi come down. I think I'm, I think you're supposed to buy butcher there and go for the double break. But maybe you just think you can't, you can't break on Paul. Versus face up liar and loyal challenger. Um, Inigon gets first pass. This uh, Caillou Forge is a big deal. If the Caillou Forge can find a th the third iron mine, that would be a really, really big deal. Or if Inigon can use his Shurusugi to find the rebuild and then use it in a conflict where you have a higher military skill. So like you have to f use it in a conflict with, with these two characters in it. So we see city get activated. I would probably go air, I would go air here, right? Like your opponent 
your opponent has Seeker Cash, they have no way of generating a fate. You need to win this air ring right here. You have first conflict, you get the fate off of it, so your opponent then can't display. You have, um, and we do see iron, uh, the third iron mine get replaced by Caillou Forges. Um, I mean, you get to dig 10 deep in the 17 card deck, so it's pretty pretty good odds there. What, 10, it's 10 and 17? Uh, you know, over 50% to hit there. I'm sending air, I'm going in mill, and I'm going to win this airing. Oh, man. I know you want your keepers, but, like, I don't know. Three keepers feels feels less less necessary than just going for pure safety. From a pure safety perspective, I can guarantee an airing, and I think that just seals the game away. I deny my opponent any more fate for the turn, and I'm just sitting pretty. I think that's just that's just my personal uh, personal way I would have approached the, the match here. I mean, because if Enagon doesn't win this turn and like a Shoju flips, and we can just see a couple backhand a compliments or whatever, and that might be the game. That's that's my only worry here. This does give you three keepers and Stan Casada though, so this this definitely perpetu or, um this definitely strengthens your win this turn here. Like I think the way I pl would play the game here is cons more conservative, and respects my opponent having things to stop me from winning, whereas the way Inagon's playing this turn is he's just going for the win. Yeah, I, I, I think so, uh, Gums. Yeah, exactly. Or you could find a fight on with your Shurusuki here. So we see a bonsai onto the Shurusuki after a double defense, and Master Whisperer gets thrown into Kasada. So, Loyal Challenger duels the Guardian to Blanket. After calling in favors, took the Watch Commander.
We saw Sentra on the Bonsai. That's what that's what it was. So Inigon plays Let Go on the Watch Commander. A use for the Let Goes. And then plays a second Watch Commander. Okay. No fate for for Scorpion here, but not getting a break. So you're not winning this turn if you don't get this break here. Which furthers I think I think furthers the the line the line I would have taken. And if you if you don't win this conflict There is one lab in the discard, so a rebuild would be uh would not win you the conflict though. This bonsai is expensive. If you kick it, you go down to three, kick it to four, and then Watch Commander takes you to three. And that's what we see here. Another thing about the air ring is in this whole in this whole conflict here, if your opponent does all the stuff and you've been doing air, you could threaten threaten your opponent also. And then we see we see Brett win the conflict with that bonsai. So now Brett can just do Paul Air here. <coughs> um, Paul Air, or you could go Paul Void. I'm probably going Air though. Paul Air. Oh, there's a Tessin. Like the thing is, now if you had done air, if you had done air on that conflict, your opponent still has to basically defend because they can't display. And if they do that, then they can't attack into you because you then get to get a military attack from Oushi. So like, it's another reason I think not to do it that way. Um, if I'm rebuilding, I would rebuild, I would rebuild a mine for sure. I would do it now. Or I, I, I mean, I would have done it in the previous conflict, um, with my, uh, with my watch commander. You can do it here if you want, but you can't defend your honor, but it doesn't look like he has one. I, I don't like that passive a conflict opportunity. I didn't even realize Brett had passed his conflict opportunity. You just, like, gave your opponent 
to get out, like, a way to get back out of it. And there's the rebuild. For lab, we're going to go for the break here. Yeah, this is this is the the correct play here. If this was your line was to get the break, you need to get the break. Can't give multiple secret cache activations. Gains two, and I think that's gonna seal the game. Actually, you iron mine your Shudusuki now because it has the Watch Commander. This this dying isn't as bad. You gain your fate and your uh, card. I would discard my lab here, because if you keep your lab, your opponent is first, they can they can box you down to six, you then go down to five from lab, if they flip shoju, you go to four, if they flip a black line artist plus shoju. Alright, well, Kasada's gonna get dispatched to nowhere. <clears throat> what a reasonable card! Who would think this is reasonable?
All right, I'm back. Sorry about that chat. Had to go deal with something. Looks like um, Kasada got dispatched. We have Butcher come down along with a student of enemies. There is no fate though, but we have Scorpion attacked water. Wait, Scor why would you do this though? You just never, you can, you can never br brute force this watch commander without a calling in favors. So, we had another rebuild, and then we had Master Esper discard two stay your hands. Yeah, but you're not going to win the ring, is the problem. You can want water to bow the butcher all you want, but it's just never going to happen. And in the... <laughs> I mean, then, then like you, you should have, you should have held your dispatch to nowhere for something else. I don't know. I'm just saying, you, you literally cannot win this water ring against a watch commander. I mean. Was it okay? If if you literally cannot beat this card, then maybe you're supposed to hold it for a second. He doesn't get he doesn't get to choose um Dio Waltz. Vice Proprietor doesn't choose which character bows. Um the crab player chooses. Sure, if you one face the butcher, then you kill Kasada, right? But like, at least you force your opponent to do it. Then you shouldn't be. Th then you shouldn't be doing water ring. Like I feel like him not fading the butcher was like a pure bait. It feels. It feels like it's. This was just like a bait right here. Like, hey, look, I didn't paint my butcher. Come bow him with the water ring, and then you just like give your opponent three keepers and a fate. <laughs> like. The because it's not like Inagana ran out of fate, right? It wasn't like he bought this with no fate because he had no choice. He clearly had the ability to fate his butcher. He chose not to on purpose. Oh, crab drew butcher from stronghold. Sure, uh, I mean you you don't have to dispatch first, right? You like you just can buy your characters. Like even if that's the case, you still force your opponent to to fate your fate the character. I mean it's not really hindsight, right? Like it's just optimal play patterns. Like if the butcher is face up, then like like so worker be saying that that the stronghold didn't have butcher. If if butcher if Butcher bu bu um, was off the stronghold, I can understand the play. But in terms of optimal optimal play play lines, you want to you want to stop away for yourself to lose, right? And obviously, if Butcher says that you cannot defend, I don't know. This card is just stupid. This this is uh just a a big wow, like very. Hilarious, hilariously made it made it through playtest. Oh wait, 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 rally stops butcher from participating. Wait, it's open deck lists. Wait, Inigan's stupid. I mean, he's still probably gonna win, but I can make fun of him, cause one, he's my friend, and two, he made a huge blunder. Like all he has to do, I mean, I don't think it matters actually, but <laughs> all he has to do is poke with one of his keepers here. He had, three, he had three conflicts. That is funny, though. All he had to do was do Paul with one of his keepers first. But I, it's not going to matter because opponent's at three and there's a watch commander in the conflict. And there's a dishonored character leaving play. And this is an air ring. Like, Scorpion's pretty dead here, but also funny.
And there we go. We just see cards get played in the Watch Commander to end the game. And so Unigal wins the game. Uh, Chalks went off to Greece. So thanks everyone for participating in chat. We will uh, have more games brought to you by various streamers. Uh, make sure to check out the YouTube channel for uh, the playlist. If For any games that you have missed, it's being updated uh, daily. And uh, we'll see you for the next one.